So you've seen now what happens when you have different amounts of resistance into a circuit and how that affects the brightness. Basically, the brightness is there just to show us that the current is changing relative to the resistance. What we're seeing is if we have a, a small amount of resistance, our brightness, meaning our current, is very, very large. And the symbol I'm using for current here is an I, because really what this term is, is current intensity. And that's why the letter I is used um, to represent current instead of the letter C. So if we have a small amount of resistance, we have a really big current. And likewise, as we get a bigger and bigger resistance, our current is getting smaller. And if our resistance gets even bigger, our current gets even smaller. So if one thing goes up and that causes the other thing to go down, we call those things inversely proportional. Now, what Ohm's law actually states is that the total amount of voltage that is supplied to a uh, circuit is equal to the total current or current intensity that is running through that circuit times the resistance, the total resistance that is in that circuit. So all of the resistors added up together. Let's make sure to note what these different terms mean. So V, that stands for voltage which really is electric potential energy. We'll get to that a little bit in a, a, another section. Uh, the I, that stands for current intensity. The R stands for resistance. Basically the amount of resistance in our resistors and then units, you're also going to need to know. So we measure voltage in volts. And you can also just write that as a letter V. So voltage measured in volts, pretty easy. Current intensity, or just current. Most of the time, you're never going to hear anybody call it current intensity. In fact, I didn't know that it was current intensity until very, very recently when I decided to Google why the heck is it an I and not a C in this formula. It's current intensity. Uh, but that is measured in amps. Uh, the full name for it is actually amperes, but you're going to just hear amps. And we do abbreviate that as a capital A. Mm -hmm. um, then finally, resistance is measured in ohms. O-H-M-S, ohms, like literally, um, like spelled the same way. Um, but the symbol that we use for this, and you may have seen this symbol before, is the symbol omega. It's a Greek letter. Um, the omega is, I mean, there's not really an equivalent in English because like there is a Greek omicron that's like the equivalent of an O. Omega is, I don't even know, like closer to U, I guess. I'm not sure. It doesn't have an equivalent. It is this symbol, basically like an upside down horseshoe. That is an ohm. Okay, so that's what our formula literally states. Now let's do some example problems using that equation. So the first um, circuit that I had over there uh, was the 100 ohm resistor. Okay. Now you might be wondering, where's the diode? What happened to the LED? LEDs have such a teeny tiny amount of resistance that they're considered negligible. If something's neg negligible, it means it has such a small impact on the situation that you can neglect it or you can ignore it. Um, there really is, in fact, an LED here. And we give it like this little symbol here to show that it's an LED and it's bright and that it has to 
B going this direction. So this is the positive end of my power source and the negative end of my power source. So electricity is going through, uh, this would be clockwise, through this particular circuit. Obviously, we know that what's really happening are teeny tiny little electrons are flowing through here from the negative side to the positive side. But when we talk about the flow of current, we talk about it as flowing from positive to negative because we understood current before we understood what electrons were. Okay, so uh, over here where our uh, potential, our electric potential is, which is our voltage, uh, we supplied this with 9 volts. Now if you actually measured it with a multimeter, it might have been a little over, ten, over 9, a little under 9, uh, but close enough to 9 for the sake of this practice and for simulating what it, what it is that we need to know here. And for, before you're preparing to actually test a real circuit with your 9 volt battery and your Arduino, doing this calculation just with 9 volts is totally acceptable. We don't need a whole lot of precision right now. Okay. Now this, the resistance is pretty much zero. So we don't need to worry about its resistance. And then that first resistor that I had over here, its resistor was equal to 100 ohms. Awesome. So now if I want to calculate the amount of current that would be flowing through this circuit, uh, we're going to use our formula that voltage is equal to current times resistance. A little bit of a problem here. Obviously, this is solved for voltage and not current. If I wanted to get current by itself, do you know how I would do that? Well, if these are being multiplied together, the opposite of multiplication is division. So if I divide both of these sides by I, then I cancels here, and then we're going to be left with a formula that says V over I is equal to R. That's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to solve for resistance, not current. Let's try that again. Were you confused? I'm going to just leave that in because I want you to know it's okay to make mistakes. All right, let's try that again. We want to get I by itself. We have to divide both sides by R. R, R, it cancels here. Okay, and then we're left with V over R is equal to I. There we go. So now we can solve for current because we know that the voltage is 9 and the resistance is 100. So obviously uh, this is going to show the bigger the resistance is, the smaller this number is going to end up being, which makes sense because we literally see in real life that the bigger the resistance is that we put into a circuit, the smaller the amount of current is that's flowing through. We see that because the brightness is lower. Okay, so now I can actually go ahead and rewrite this as I equals VR, which I like doing because I like solving things from left to right. Okay, so my formula, I is equal to V divided by R, now I'm going to substitute the things that I know. Please always, when you're showing your work, always write this formula with just the letters in it before you start plugging in numbers. And also, when you start plugging in numbers, always include the units for that number. That's going to be really important to make sure that you put things in the right place and that your units actually balance out. So that's 9 volts divided by... 100 ohms. Okay, what's 9 divided by 100? That should be 0 0.09 amps. Because remember when we were talking about the units for things, uh, volts was, voltage was volts, resistance was ohms, and current is amps. So this is 0 0.09 9 amps, which we would just give a letter A like that. Now, 
you're often going to see, uh, and especially if you even look at your multimeters, you're going to see that current is not usually given to you in amps. It's usually given to you in milliamps. So I actually really need you to understand how to convert from amps to milliamps. I'm going to show you that next.